Well, Jeff, I know you did um, the first episode, um, but I think this is a question for everybody, and that is um, just setting up the mythology, setting up the tone of the show. In the uh, in the gallery episodes, I think it was Dave Filoni that said this, and he's talking about all the directors getting together, and, and he called it Star Wars School. And for all of you, was there any, whether it was collectively or as individuals, sitting down with the showrunners and, and just sort of getting a sense of, I see Jeff shaking his head. He was on his own. Make this up as you go along, Jeff. I'm telling you, when I started, I it was it was John was there and Dave was in San Francisco, and they were just starting to kind of tinker around with stuff. So I was getting footage, and I wouldn't talk to John or Dave for you know a week at a time because they were off designing and developing all this stuff. So I was just kind of doing my own thing and throwing you know cutting it in and doing all this stuff. Now I have a, a like, like I said, nerd, nerd cred on star Wars, not like Dave style, but I'm like, it, it's, you know, the whole reason for my existence basically. And uh, <laughs> so I was doing like the star Wars of it, which is like, you know, the, the wipes, you know, the classic, the, the tales of this kind of thing. The one thing that I definitely strayed away from is I never tempt with star Wars music, which I think is a huge part of the star Wars universe. But I think basically what we did was go off of the, 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 the established style of Star Wars, which I think you could say is the sound design and the story and the music. We changed the music. The story is the same. The sound design is the same. And everything else just kind of fell into place. If, if, if I can add, when I, so when I met on this job, I got the call from my agent. I was very shocked. What is this? You know, I didn't. You know, I'm not a Star Wars geek. I've seen the Star Wars movies. I but I can't tell you verbatim what's you know who the different characters are. I could never have told you who Boba Fett was if you had asked me, you know, or anything else. But um, but of course um, now I know a lot more. But at the time, I'm sitting down and I'm and they're and I'm saying I'm being very candid that I'm not a Star Wars geek. I don't know. And they, and they're saying that is perfect. You know, I they knew a lot about my you know I worked with Quentin Tarantino on a couple of westerns. And I've worked on uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, and they wanted that that feature level um, experience, and they wanted that Western style, that vibe, and that's yeah. something they wanted someone who had a different outside point of view. They did not want this to be a Star Wars movie per se. They wanted it to have be a little more free form and and have everyone's unique style, which you it definitely comes through with the different directors as well. To like kind of expound on what Andrew just said, he's absolutely right. Like. Dave Filoni, like, I would do something like, but yeah, but this is Star Wars. This is Star Wars. And Dave would say, you know what? If we do it exactly Star Wars, then we're just making a fan film. And we're trying to make our own film. And so what it is, is like, you, you think of Star Wars as like the basis for the inspiration. And then everything else just kind of blossomed from there. And now it's its own thing. So we basically just took it and ran with it in our own direction. But there are days where John and Dave will still say, that's not Star Wars, or let's make it more, like, how do we do this more Star Wars? And that has a lot to do with, like, like I said, the visual effects, everything's got to look like Star Wars. John will not have these massive sweeping camera moves that George Lucas could never have filmed in 1976. Do you right. know what I mean? And he'll call Dave, he'll call Filoni and say, Dave, does this work? Would we, could we have shot this, you know? And Dave will say, no, we couldn't have, or, you know, that red stripe, we would never have had that red stripe on that ship because this, that, right. or the other things like that. And they called Doug Chang in who, you know, who designed all these, you know, the beautiful images you see at the end of all the episodes. Um, and but at first, they bring him in as well. When they first started shooting, like I remember Deborah Chow was upset because they wouldn't let her get um, high angle shots, use Correct. a crane or use a steady cam because that's not how George would have done it. But then eventually it all kind of started to evolve. Yes. We still have rules like stylistic rules that we follow that the directors follow, but it, it started to evolve. Like Rick came in and did all of this really cool <laughs> steady cam footage in that volume where like in the, you remember in the hangar when he's talking to, um, I forget the character's name. Yeah. Rand. The and like there's, episode? Yeah, in 106. And there's like these great tracking shots that go around and you, you, you're really showing off the volume. And after that point, they started to like loosen the rules on the style of the shooting. I remember Deborah Chow was saying like, damn it, why wouldn't they let me use that when I was right. directing? Because like they, they kind of hamstrung her a little bit to be more in line. But now everything's kind of like loosening up and they let... They let it go a little bit further, you know, creatively. Right. But, it's true. but you're right, Jeff, because on episode 102 with Rick, uh, he had these really cool 
straight down overhead shots of, uh, you know, the Jawa sand crawlers and stuff. And, and it would be in the previs and we, you know, they'd be there for the longest time. And then um, it would come to shoot and, and John would all of a sudden out of nowhere, after we've been looking at it for months, thinking it's going to be great. He's like, we can't do a shot like that. That's, that's completely not Star Wars. And then we have to rethink the scene, but in, you're right. He did come around and we ended up getting some high wide shots that he would not normally have agreed to because he realized they were cool looking and he did right. you know he relented in some ways yeah well, yeah in terms of what's star wars and what's not star wars um you know, jeff you mentioned the wipes dana to me that's something that's so classic star wars or, or the wipes and I, I don't know what caught my eye about them the other day when i was rewatching the series but you wonder are there rules to wipes i mean beyond just the whole like okay this is a passage of time or we're changing geographies are oh, there that's certain it. No, things? that's it. You just said it. That's it. That's literally that's it. Those are the rules. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> There's got to be more because, Dana, how do you decide which type of wipe to choose and which direction for it to move in? Because that's what, what caught my eye is the wipe The wipe was wiping in the direction that characters were moving. And I was like, was that intentional because they were going that way or it's just that's what she picked? Um, for wipes, for me, that it's very intentional because of, you know, visually it just looks better when you wipe with a character that's walking left to right, you wipe left to right just to follow the character. I think it would be a little bit visually jarring if you went against that. So yeah, I do think there's there's a rhyme and a reason for them all, but very intentional. It's kind of carte blanche too. It's like we would get the chance to choose our wipes and when we put them in and they would, John and Dave could pull them out or they could change them or alter them. I would say that the one that we were inspired by the most is from New Hope, when uh, Obi Wan Kenobi and Luke Skywalker lift up C three PO after the Sandcrawler or after the um, Tuskens attack. Remember, and the white goes up with C three PO's body. It almost looks like he's cut in half, but like it's that kind of thing that we were always inspired by. It's like well, which way is the, the the scene moving? What which way is the character moving? Let's see if that transitions into the next scene better. Jeff, you just earned 10 nerd points on that one. That was good. Um, <laughs> I told you. Man. I told you. I live and breathe it. So a little little more on the whole like paying um, you know, homage to to the to the OG movies and, and the Clone Wars. Um, you know, Dylan, there are so many little things, and maybe they're not so little to a Star Wars nerd like Jeff. Um, but just little moments that really make the authenticity, whether it's props or lines of dialogue. You know, are there were there things like when you talk to to the director that you happen to be working with or with, with John and Dave where um, it's like, no, 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 you got to make sure that that stays long enough so they know that, that oh, that's the thermal detonator or that I, I recognize that. Um, and I can't remember the, the prop from Empire that people are talking about online. There was some ca container that was very important. Oh, the Cam Tom. No, no. That's all right. So so Dylan, do they do they is it an overt act of theirs to say, listen, when you're cutting this, just make sure that you that the audience gets a sense of this Star Wars element or just. It's no, I mean, I, I don't think so. I mean, I think their thing is we're, we're going to build the prop. We're going to have it in there. We're going to use it. And for the people who find it or the, somebody who, uh, you know, really appreciates it, it'll be there. We're not going to cut, you know, cut to something special just because of that. They, they, they think the audience, they know the audience is, uh, is smart and interested and they want to, you know, you know, uh, repay that. So 